Viva la Paris. Viva la congestion. Welcome to Fully Charged. We are driving the DS3 Crossback e tens This is the premium brand of Citroen. The first crossover SUV that's fully electric. I'm standing on top of a historic swimming pool in Paris where the bikini was launched in 1946. I'm not going to reveal a bikini today, it's not relevant. Today I'm here because DS, the luxury brand that isn't really associated with Citroen but kind of is, is releasing their new car that I'm going to drive, their fully electric DS3 Crossback e tents And that's what it looks like. It's not a conventional hatchback, it's a crossover SUV kind of shape, which is one of the most popular segments. It's a heavily contested segment. In fact, if you've looked at the Hyundai Icona and if you looked at the Kia e Nero, they are classed as crossovers, really, sort of watered down SUVs. And that's what this car is sort of competing with. So, what is the DS3 Crossback e Tense? Well, it's PSA, the group. DS is the top brand, it's the most luxurious brand, and DS is trying to be very, very French with its sort of chic and its trend setting, and its quirks, frankly, and I like that about it, it's very quirky. Okay, so what are we dealing with? Well, as I've said before, the E208 Peugeot, which we reviewed in an earlier video, if you haven't seen that video already, uh, watch that review because it'll make more sense. This is based upon exactly the same underpinnings because the PSA group, which is Citroen, DS, Vauxhall and Peugeot. They're all sharing R&D and drivetrains. 100 kilowatt electric motor, liquid cooled battery pack, like I say, 50 kilowatt hours. Um, and it's the same in this car as the e E208 Peugeot and the same the forthcoming electric Corsa and in the electric E2008 Peugeot, which is an SUV crossover like this. So DS Automobiles, Etienne, let's talk what, what, when that started. Was that 2015? 2015. 2015. It was brand, yes. Okay, so before we'd seen DS badges on Citroëns, I remember the DS3 yes. with the similar sort of designs and things, which was a hugely popular car in the UK. Yes, it was, um, a, it was the first move. It was a, a, the, part of the heritage. Yeah. Then the, uh, the customers asked us to get beyond and get further. So it was necessary for us to create a brand and. Uh, to walk our own way. And what is the mantra, what's the mission statement of DS? Is it, is it extra luxurious? It's a, the, the basic uh, statement is to embody the French luxury know-how and yeah. bring it into the automotive industry. Yeah. Because we believe that we have the legitimacy to do that. Yeah. Uh, in the old times before, uh, some, some luxury brands were French. Um, Delage, De La Haye, Bugatti, they, all, they, they are all all part of the heritage. Yeah, so yeah. The, probably we, we lost it, and uh, it's, it's time to, to be able to, to bring the, this know-how, because the know-how still exists. They're about you know, quintessentially French luxury, and I do understand that, and lots of technology, and I get that. But when I've been in the car for a little while, I find myself thinking, well, there's not, a, there's not like way more technology than other cars in its group. I mean, like this is the top of the range one that's 40 grand and it's still manual adjustment, manual adjustment seat, for example. And the buttons, I press them and I press them again and sometimes I press them again and I don't know if it's my skin grease or what, but they don't seem to respond every time. And that's annoying me now, let alone if I was to buy it. But then I keep coming back to the suspension and the seat comfort going, it is really comfortable. You've got the DS logo here, which follows the shapes of almost everything inside the car and out. These sort of uh, diamonds and, and things like that. You've, you've got that going on everywhere. On the tops of the wings, you've got these creases. And when you're inside the car, they look like pronounced wing tops. You can kind of position the car from there. There's a big crease. You can see how much it rises up there. Now, all DS3 crossbacks are five door, five seat. 
This particular version is the La Première, which is the one I'll be driving, and it has a textured roof. Again, diamond kind of hatching, cross hatching. It is just very, very bold and unusual, and I like it. It's the same on the, uh, the side mirror cappings. I mean, it'll be a bit of a breeding ground for moss if you don't, if you park your car under trees, you know, litching. You just got to make sure you wash your car properly and protect it. So a lot of cars now have got this sort of flush fitting door handle. Good for aero. I've seen it on Jaguars and Land Rovers. That was the first time I saw it. We're only going to see more of it. Go up to the car with the key in your pocket, for example, and you push it, unlocks, and then you go in. This is when DS really goes to town creatively. You've got diamonds and cross hatching pretty much everywhere. You've got the start of it on the corner of the dash and then it kind of fades away. You've got the diamond buttons here um, underneath the infotainment. These buttons are sort of semi-touch sensitive. You've got a touch screen here which sticks out of the dash in a tablet way which we've seen with lots of manufacturers. Even that's diamond hatched on the top there. Then you've got this little tight binnacle with a head-up display on the top there. And that's got the kind of triangles and chevrons and diamonds. I don't know what shape you'd call it. I suppose it is a, yeah, it is a triangle. And then you've got the steering wheel, which is not circular and not quartic and not diamond. I don't know what shape that is. So the underneath of the DS3 Crossback is the same as the Peugeot E208. So you've got a 100 kilowatt electric motor made by Continental that lives under the front. It's front wheel drive only. And then you've got 50 kilowatt hours of a, of a battery pack, which sits underneath the back seats and then down through the, the center console. That's liquid cooled. You can rapid charge up to 100 kilowatts. Uh, so zero to 80% in 30 minutes. On a normal seven kilowatt uh, charge box at home like this it'll take you uh, seven and a half hours or five hours if it's an 11 kilowatt um, box and this is built on the same production line as the diesels and the petrols so that evs can be made can be wrapped up production or backed off it's kind of a modern thought process uh, and i think they've done a really good job i like the e208 the e208 looks fine it's well appointed it's not really, really sharp when it comes to back roads, cornering, the suspension is a little bit, make, gets a bit unsettled because this is a heavier car and the Peugeot is a heavier car than its diesels and its petrol counterparts. Now, before I've just got in this car, the product manager of DS said to me, we really made a point of this car being silent and comfortable. That makes a lot of sense because historically high-end Citroens have always been about a sort of pillowy ride, a really comfortable seat, a cosseting, relaxing. It's a relaxing brand. It's not a sort of intense brand despite the fact that it's called the E-Tense. It isn't actually intense. It's got these fake vents here and here, which look great from uh, a distance. And then when you get up close, you wonder what the hell it's all about. But I actually like the shape here. I like the shape of the bumper. I like these really shallow kind of um, scoopy eyes, they're similar to sort of Kia's design language at the moment. I wondered how to get into the boot. Weirdly, it's under here where the number plate light is, which is a bit odd, right? We've got some stuff in the boot, look, to show that we're real, we're real world people. We've got some camera bags and stuff like that. Now that is a 350 litre boot. And of course, it's a slightly higher car than the E208 because it's a kind of crossover. The E2008, which I haven't quite driven yet, that will be the direct sort of internal rival, if you will, to this because it's more of a crossover. OK, so immediately the same as the E208. It's a little gripe that I had. This opening, this aperture is actually quite small to swing your legs in and get in. The other thing is obviously the batteries live under here. So it's a bit compromised in terms of, 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 of foot space, I think, plus it's a cool design feature, this, this mad bit of bodywork. But if you're a small person and you can't quite, you haven't got the head height, you might find this a bit obtrusive and looking out at the uh, landscape going by. So cool bit of design externally, internally, bit of a compromise. Fabrics, there's a couple of different fabrics to choose from and they're interesting, but I think the Peugeot is a bit more interesting. Car manufacturers are now experimenting with reusable, um, recycled yes. materials. Yes. Are we going to see, and I know in the past, um, Citroen as a brand has used interesting composites, 
Are we going to see some more of those coming through at DS? We're working on that, of course, to integrate the more we can, but uh, these kind of, uh, of things. It's the, we always think about interior design as not only design, but also customer be benefits to customers. Yeah. For instance, if you have a look on the seats, it should be comfortable, yeah. and you have to work also on the durability of the components yeah. and uh, all, the, all, all of this. Um, for instance, on this car, uh, we using, you are using exactly the same high efficient density foam that we applied on the S7 Crossback, okay. which is quite unique also. Uh, yeah. This is an expensive car. When you put it down on paper and you really look at what you're competing with, what else you could buy for this money, the DS is an expensive car. It starts at £34,400, and that is a car which comes with 200 mile range or 206 if you're really, really good, WLTP. And when you compare that to its peers like the Hyundai Kona and the Kia e Nero, which have got 300 mile range and they're cheaper, uh, and also I guess the Peugeot E208, you are paying more for, for the luxury and the quirks and the sort of exclusivity. You have to take that into account. If it's just range for the money, this is not the best car out there, I don't think. Uh, and then we come to the front. Now, I've described most of this as I've been driving it. I've been in it a couple of hours now. And when you start to spend a few hours in a car, you get your head around the layout and the appointments. Just while I remember, I've noticed there's no USBs in the back. There's no USB plugs in the back, and there's not a great deal of storage in the back, frankly. And the foot space is, the leg space is average at best. But I do like the architecture of the dash. It's unusual, it's weird, and I'm sure you can spec it in a numerous different textures and colors. DS, uh, as a brand, has said that uh, is it all their vehicles are going to be electrified in some way by 20... We already uh, have all the range um, electrified, yeah. meaning that for all products we are able to provide gasoline, diesel and an electrified version, yeah. whether it's electric, plug-in or um, both. Or pure uh, EV, yes. Pure EV like this. Yeah. Uh, from 2025, all the car will be exclusively electrified. All of them? Yes. Okay. So, plug-in electric, yeah. pure battery electric vehicles, yeah. or both. Okay. I would like more performance for the money, and I would like more range for the money. I think the exterior design, the aesthetics, great. I really like this cabin. I really like the, the comfort, but I would like it to have a, more of a range for the kind of cash we're dealing with here. Performance, it's a little bit slower than the E208. Nine seconds to 62 for this, 8.1 for the E208 but it does feel actually like a bigger car and it feels like a higher car as well because it is. Peugeot are going to be bringing out imminently the E2008 and the 2008 is on the same platform again but it's a higher rise crossover SUV thing and that's what will be the sort of slightly lesser uh, luxury version of this. The original DS was the, uh, one of the fir first car maybe that had headlights that moved as you turned the steering wheel. Yes, yes. We have seen this in other cars, in Citroëns in fact, in the last 15 years I think. Yes. Is that one of DS's um, USPs, yes. unique? Part, part of the USPs, yeah. actually we mentioned styling of course, yeah. we mentioned refinement yeah. and the luxury feeling. Yeah. And also, there is technology, and in the chapter of technologies, there are some that are complete USP on the category. The first one, of course, this one, um, the headlamps, um, have a specific matrix beam technology inside it. So you always drive full beam, yeah, and you don't care. You don't care anymore. I know. If you that. cross a car, it will just close some it segments. Just sort of masks just it off. Yet, yes.
I actually feel like I'm presenting an episode from Grand Designs because when you look at a car like this, it's just, it's a bit crackers and a bit quirky. And a lot of it isn't for any reason in particular, it's just because it can be a bit different. And that's really what this car is about. And if that doesn't appeal to you and paying a premium for that doesn't appeal to you, there's no point in buying a DS3 Crossback E-Tents instead of one of its competitors. So it's a very difficult one for me to sum up, really. And it's mostly the price. I just think they've priced it a little bit too steep. And I know why they're trying to do it, because they're trying to set the DS up as a as a more luxurious brand, but if you don't see the value of that or you don't understand what DS is, then it's sort of pointless. As usual, thank you for watching Grand Designs. We've got many other amazing pieces of architecture coming out in the forthcoming series. Um, and I'm going to walk around them and I'm going to explain to the owners that they may be, ma may be making a bad decision. I might also say that they've made some bold, bold moves and it's paid off. And other times I might say that that's a very expensive thing and I'm not sure I would have paid for it. And in the case of the DS, I think it's a cool car to look at and it's quirky and it's interesting. And you know what? It is so quiet and comfortable. It's just too expensive and it's too expensive for the range and the performance that you're getting. And that's the thing, if you, if you value comfort and luxury more than performance and range, this is a car that you will consider. If you don't, just get one of its rivals. Thank you very much for watching Fully Charged. If you don't subscribe, please press the subscribe button and touch that bell icon, because that means that as soon as we release a new episode, you'll be the first to know about it. And we typically release one to two episodes every single week. We also do a podcast. Did you know? Well, if you didn't, you need to find it. If you're a Patreon, thank you for supporting us. We love it when you support us because it helps us make these episodes bigger and bolder and we've got so much more that we can bring to you. That is all I'm going to say. Thanks for watching Grand Designs. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.